What's going on everybody? You're tuned in to another episode of Whiskey Business. My name is Jesse, and if you're new here, thanks for joining us. If you do go on to enjoy this video, or just enjoy whiskey in general, I really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. It really helps me to keep the content coming and push the uh, video out into the YouTube space for others to uh, come by and see. So here at Whiskey Business, I like to focus on things that the LCBO has to offer as far as whiskeys go. Um, I've branched into a little bit of craft beers, but but anyways, uh, the main focus is whiskey sold and available at the LCBO, because if you are a local Ontarian like myself, you are locked to all your liquor sales being from the LCBO. So I like to showcase what is available, prices, um, and really if it's worth your dollar, because some stuff uh, as you probably know, can be very expensive at the LCBO and hard to find. So I like to showcase um, what they have to offer as well as what is uh, readily available there for a reasonable price. So uh, if you've been following me along my whiskey journey, you probably know that um, I'm I'm really fond of bourbon, but I have been branching into scotch. Uh, I did start with Canadian, went to bourbon, branching into scotch now. So um, in, in uh, light of today's occasion which is international scotch whiskey day i thought i would showcase a very very popular and great entry level distiller uh, that has a nice offering an array of offerings but they have a nice offering right now at the lcbo if if you're looking at this um around this time period uh it's usually sold as a it's usually sold as a gift set around the holiday season um, or Christmas time, but if stores do not sell out, I'm sure they will still have it on their shelves, as well as it's usually available for online order for a few months um, after. So if all this sounds interesting to you, like I said, leave a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram right here to stay up to date with all my recent posts and LCBO pickups, I'd really appreciate it. And leave a comment down below what you guys are sipping on on today's International Scotch Whiskey Day. So, with all that out of the way, without further ado, let's get into some whiskey business. All right, we're back. And uh, if you notice the lighting difference, I had to turn the light down behind the camera. Typically, I'll uh, put the lights somewhere else, but I've I've got quite the mess going on uh, in this room right now. Um, so bear with me if the lighting isn't as good. Uh, also, I'd like to just explain uh, my recent hiatus from YouTube. Uh, I underwent a back injury in the process of moving all my gym equipment out from the cold cold minus 20 garage into the house uh started just doing workouts in the basement and well didn't have all the full equipment kind of wouldn't recommend going as hard as i did but i was just really trying to stay on. i was really trying to stay on track with my uh training program and well let's just say i didn't have uh the full supports in place and i ended up injuring my back so I've kind of just been chilling, taking a rest from everything that's been um, stressing me out or, uh, you know, just taking a rest. So please bear with me with that. Uh, the, the posts will become more frequently starting today, promise. Um, but anyways, I've been talking for probably five minutes now. Let's get in to today's exciting decapitation. So. This is my first time trying Glen Morangi. Some people say Glen Morangi, some people say Glen Morangi. And um, so this is my first time trying it. I've I've been really um, I've been really debating picking up the uh, Glen Morangi 10 for quite some time now. I've seen it on sale quite a few times, but never really pulled the trigger. So today um i thought why not bust out this tasting set that i got over the holiday uh season and 
This is available at the LCBO. I believe it's $69.99 for all four and uh, definitely readily available in other parts of the country as well as in America for sure. But uh, this uh, tasting set is, it, it highlights their core offerings, I would say. Um, we have, so if you don't know, Glen Morangy Highland Single Malt, uh, very beginner entry level uh, affordable Highland single malt. Um, quite comparable. Uh, I've heard the Glen Morin G10 is pretty comparable to uh, things like Glen Fittick 12, so, which I have tried um, and did enjoy. I actually really enjoyed uh, the, the Highland single malts I've been having recently. So uh, yeah, anyways, let's get into what we got in here. We've got the original, which is bourbon cask matured. So this is the 10 year Glenmorangie Morangie bourbon cask matured as a bourbon fan, that excites me. We've also got the sherry cask finish, which is coming in at 12 years, right here. So yeah, that's sherry cask finish, um, aged in American oak bourbon barrels still, but then finished in the sherry cask for X amount of time, they don't really specify, um, but yeah, that's coming in at 12 years old. Then we've got the, sorry, that, that's called the La Santa, okay? Then we have the Quinta Rubin, which is the port cask finish. So uh, port, another type of wine, it's Italian fortified wine. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan, but we'll see. This is my first port cask finish whiskey, believe it or not. And then last but not least, we have the Nectar, the, the Nectar Doir, or Dor, not sure how to pronounce it, and that's a Sauternes cask finish, which I've had some other whiskeys uh, that were Sauternes cask finished. Um, actually, they were they were brandies, but uh, I did enjoy them. Sherry cask, also very enjoyable. So the the uh, Quinto Rubin over here, the port cask is coming at 14 years, and the Sauternes cask is actually unmarked as far as age, so no age statement on the Necker Dwar, or Dwar, I'm just gonna call it Dwar, but uh, yeah, it says rare casks with special reserve, and yeah, that's about it. So we got a 10, 12, 14, and uh, unaged, all from different uh, different cask finishes, so uh, it's kind of nice to build up your palate that way if, if, you know, you're getting into the Scotch game. I feel like this is a good place to start to kind of maybe pick apart these different uh, wine cask finished uh, scotches. So the La Santa is coming in at 43% ABV, the original 40% bare minimum, and the Quinto Rubin and the Nectar Dwar are coming in at 46% ABV. So with all that out of the way, let's get into some nosing. Anyways, let's get into the first one. Glen Morangi 10, standard offering. Mm. So, of course, you can tell right away, Highland, single malt, you got the maltiness, that lightness, slight essence of floral, some honeysuckle. Overall, very sweet and approachable. faint hints of black tea. Yeah, the floral is a little bit like a tropical floral. Some fresh coconut. Mm. I'd say interlaced with some vanilla for sure. Overall, it smells really good. Really like, really like the Highlands. Uh, they're very light, pleasant on the nose, and uh, offer a lot of inviting sweetness. Actually, you know what? I went in the wrong order here. We're going for now the 12 year sherry cask. Mm, there's uh, some deep richness in there, tobacco notes. You can tell it's still that same base, um, single malt. Uh, you, can, you can sense the lightness in the air in the back but it's just really covered up by like this deep, robust uh, plum fig. 
some dried tobacco, like a fresher dried tobacco, not like stale dried tobacco. Sultana raisins. Almost a little bit of sea salt or iodine. Some baked fig, a bit of cinnamon, and I would say like a very subtle bitter orange peel um, essence in there. Still a very nice nose. I think I, I prefer the depth of that one, but I, I prefer the overall um, uh, notes on the first one. Okay, now we got the 14 year old port cask finish. Yeah, so it's definitely having that very uh, fortified wine smell, a little bit musty, some grape in there, almost like if you've ever been to a, like a true Italian's house and they got the wine cellar in the basement and you go down there and it's like cold but musty grape. Not like musty in a bad way, but you know, it's a cold unfinished basement, a little bit of mustiness in there. I'm getting that, it's a little bit of Sultana still but mainly uh, more of a fresh red grape. Um, bordering into, bordering into like an artificial Kool-Aid type smell. Not too artificial. Not getting the tobacco notes. Like, Maybe some nutmeg. This, it's not cinnamon. Maybe it's allspice. There's um, a slight minty chocolate sweet note I'm getting on the nose. Like a peppermint patty that they, uh, they toned the peppermint down quite a lot, but some dark chocolate, faint bit of peppermint in there. And there's some red berries in there. Maybe some some raspberry mulberry. I like that one. That one's pretty good considering um, I'm not the biggest fan of um, port wines, uh, fortified wines in general. Uh, sorry, last but not least, the Sauternus cask, the Nectar Doir. No age statement. Okay, straight, just vanilla honeysuckle it, we're back to that light floral uh that the 10 had to offer but it's amped up mm, coconuts there again that black tea is a lot more faint um it's it's way less bitter more of a sweet black tea boba tea if you will some nice uh, lemon tart, like um, maybe lemon meringue pie, but I'm thinking more when you open that clamshell of lemon tarts, or uh, if you have someone that's made fresh lemon tarts, that that uh, lemony, acidic, uh, just pungent smell mixed with the graham cracker, baked, baked good type smells. But yeah, definitely some lemon tart for sure, that's nice. Yeah, uh, so that's it for the nosing. If I had to rank these, I would say my favorite is probably uh, the Nectar Door, uh, and then it would go straight to the Glen Morangi 10, the original offering. Um, and then I would say the Port Cask, followed up by the Sherry Cask, which I wouldn't have thought, but hey, nose doesn't lie, right? Anyways to the Glen Moran G10. Hope you all are having a great day, great week, and a great start to this new year. Uh, we're in February already, can't believe it. But uh, yeah, it's my first time trying Glen Moran G, and it's an international scotch day. Cheers. Very light, like I said on the nose, light, floral, sweet. Um, it's honey sweet. There's some vanilla in there. 
a tropical coconut. black tea um, doesn't really show up but yeah vanilla honeysuckle just a light floral coconut it's, it's good it's good it's totally sippable uh, it is comparable to the Glen Fittich 12 uh, from what I remember uh, as well as maybe the Glen Levitt 12 uh, yeah pretty good I like it okay on to sherry cask 12 year I'll just call it by the name the La Santa Mm. The nose is nice. I, I do enjoy it. Wow, that's deep. That's what she said. <laughs> Robust, just just hits you like a mouthful of um, of fresh tobacco, topped with some sultana raisins. You get a little bit of that iodine in there too. The uh, sea breeze if you will um yeah like i said you can tell that light floralness is there in the background but you're really hit with that nice tobacco deep dark notes a little bit of dark chocolate in there that, that cinnamon baking spice it's nice that's nice take a sip of water okay the the Quinta Rubin, 14-year-old port cask. Mm. Getting some bitter, bitter orange peel. Those red berries, uh, more in the way of, I want to say, like more exotic, I guess, if you want to call it, like Loganberry mulberries. If you want to call those exotic, if you're like native to Canada like me, you probably don't see those too often in uh, your generic grocery stores. So that's why I'm saying they're exotic, but obviously they're not quite exotic. Just a little bit more of those um, um, rare berry types. Still got some warm spice in there. Um, a little bit of that that mint chocolate comes through tastes more of a milk chocolate on the palate than it did on the nose the nose was more of a dark chocolate but you do get that peppermint um, so far this one's the only one having like a finish effect honestly like the finishes all very well rounded but by no means are they long um, or even medium at that, you know, coming from like high proof bourbon, I feel like maybe my, my expectancy for a nice finish is uh, pretty high, but, um, still the, the upfront flavors are, are way nicer. And in my opinion, scotches are just a lot more delicate of a uh, whiskey and, you know, you want to sip it a little bit lighter and really take the time to break apart the flavors while it's in your mouth because once you swallow it's kind of gone so for for the for the most part uh for the general majority of base offering single malt scotches as you um get more expensive and climb higher up that way you're gonna be uh left with better longer finishes but I think it really takes um, quite a lot more money to get into that range in my opinion okay last but not least the nectar door Sauternus cask finish mm. that's just vanilla some black pepper in there almost reminiscent of a bourbon we've got uh ginger like cooked gingerbread i would say it's got some cinnamon and, and nutmeg warm spices all mixed together with that ginger black pepper it's very gingerbread-esque that's nice a little bit of that saltiness comes through coconut 
again. It's like a coconut gingerbread. Um, a drizzle of honey. Mm. Yeah, that's really all I'm getting on that one. Wow. So, now, I don't, I don't particularly want to rate these um, all in this video uh, based off of all criteria, but I will probably make individual videos focusing on each um, and every one of these where I will go into depth on my full rating scale. So if you guys want to see that, definitely subscribe, stay tuned for that. But I will rank these in my favorite to least favorite on the palette, like I just did on the nose. Uh, the finish on that one also was a little bit more prominent. I really wish I had an age statement on that just because I feel like the depth of flavor is, um, it's like the 10 but amped up. So I feel like it is a little bit older, but uh, yeah, they're not, they're not specifying, so. So, in first place, I gotta do some back and forth here. So, this is hard because I want to say first place is actually the Glenmore G10, but the depth in in the Nectar Door is a little bit better. First place is actually going to go to the Quinta Rubin 14-year-old port finished. Really enjoyed it. I think... Um, I think it has a lot to offer, more of a dessert type whiskey, more depth, more robustness. Um, number two. Number two is going to go to the standard 10 year Glenmore G original offering. I think it's great uh, overall, totally approachable, uh, a nice light uh, palette that you can just uh, pick apart and just really savor. It's it's not dessert like like um, the sherry cask finish or the port cask finish, but it's also sweet enough that it's not like a super bitter bland scotch in my opinion. So that leaves us with number three, which is the sherry. No, sorry, number three, Sauternus cask, and number four, the sherry cask finish. So. To recap, we've got number one, um, Quinta Rubin. Number two, we've got the original. Number three, Nectar Dwar. And number four, the Lasanta. Overall, really enjoyed this tasting set. I I do like tasting sets, and I actually just picked up the Old Forester. Um, I think it's the Whiskey Row series. I'm not sure. It, it comes with three um, of the Old Foresters, and I think the tasting sets are a great way to introduce yourself to a certain brand and kind of pick up on their house style and then see what what uh, types of finishes um, do to that house style and maybe lead you on a path of, of um, liking a certain cask finish more so then you can pursue these cask finishes from other distilleries. I, I know I typically do like the sherry cask. I think there's a time and a place for it. It's more desserty, a little bit more medicinal for me, but there's definitely a time and a place for it. Um, the lighter standard Highland Single Malt offerings, it's always a good dram. Can't go wrong. That's my opinion. So that's going to do for this video. Um, like I've said probably four times already, I hope you guys had a great International Scotch Whiskey Day. And uh, please let me know what you guys were sipping on down below. I've got some exciting things to uh, crack open soon once I attain the goals that I have set before I open them. We've got the Ardbeg Cordy Reckon, we've got the Glen Alaki 8, and we've got the Glen Goyne Cask Strength. Never had Glen, Glen Goyne or Glen, yeah, never had it. Super exciting. As well as that Lafroy Quarter Cask, still we'll have to bust that open. But yeah, lots to come in this uh, 2023 year. Hopefully this year has been great to you already, and uh, you're gonna make it even better of a year. Anyways, I'd like to thank you for watching, and uh, if you did enjoy, please leave a like, 
leave a comment down below your suggestions or things you would like me to try and review that are available at the LCBO. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram right here. Anyways, guys, this has been Whiskey Business, and I'm out, guys. Cheers.